Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. Oh, let's see. This is part three of the knowledge and wisdom of scriptures, the mind of God. Since Solomon was called the wisest man that ever lived, maybe we should read some of his words. So get your King James Bible and let's open to the book of Proverbs chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So in other words, if the evil try to get you to do something, don't do it. Verse 11. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. In other words, to kill. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay, lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Do you know that wisdom is considered compared to a she, a woman? Uh, isn't the church called the bride of Christ? And, and Israel, referred to as a she. And we're talking about knowledge and wisdom of the Lord. So wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Now this is the Lord saying, Behold, I will pour out my Holy Spirit, right? I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Didn't Jesus say that, Verily, verily, I say unto you that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. Listen to this. I did, a, I did a Bible study on this. I will make known my words unto you. Verse 24. Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded but ye have said it not, which means nothing, but ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. 
I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. God pronounces destruction, people, upon those that reject his knowledge. You can be assured of that. Now, in Proverbs 2 and verse 6, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. All right, let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do you know if there's good doctrine, there's bad doctrine too, okay? For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her. Love what? Wisdom and understanding. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. Ah. People always tell me there's no grace in the Old Testament. It's all law. Well, they're wrong. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straight, straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Wow. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. 
In other words, look straight ahead and walk the straight and narrow path. That's the, uh, that's the Bob translation. All right, in uh, Proverbs 7 and verse 4, say unto wisdom. Did you know you're supposed to say something to wisdom? What are we supposed to say? Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. Proverbs 8, 1. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? Proverbs 8, 11. For wisdom is better than rubies. What wisdom? Seeking the Lord and his kingdom. That's, that's wisdom. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, he said, but seek ye first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not our own righteousness, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, in Proverbs 8.11, we write, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Proverbs 9.1, Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. All right, Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now, it says, you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom or knowledge, right? The beginning of wisdom, right? But in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18 we read there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love now in Matthew chapter 22 verse 36 a doctor of the law came to Jesus and asked him this question. You probably, those of you that listen to me for a while, you know this one by heart. He goes, Master, uh, sometime, and this word master, sometimes they translate it in the King James as master, other times as rabbi. Same word. He says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You see, if you love the Lord with all your heart, perfect love casts out fear. You know, so... In Proverbs 9, 10, where it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Well, you know, if you love, there is no, there is no fear. In Proverbs 16, 16, it writes, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather than be chosen than silver? Ah. In the book of Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 26, we read, For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now, there's good godly wisdom and knowledge, and then there's bad knowledge and wisdom. Look at 
Genesis chapter 2 and verse and chapter 3. You had the tree of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? We'll turn to Ezekiel chapter 28. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, We're starting in verse 1. Ezekiel 28, 1. Now verse 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the sea, seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten the riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic thou hast increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, Therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before them that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now, this is a change. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Thou hast been in Eden? Now this obviously can't be just a mere human, because Tyre existed many hundreds of years after the Garden of Eden. So who was in the Garden of Eden? Well, let's take a look. Thou hast been in Eden, the Garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. In the day that thou wast created, not born. This entity, this being was created, not born. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub. What's a cherub? It's a very high-ranking angel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What did it cover? Probably the one of the two angels of the Ark of the Covenant. You know, they had the, their, their wings that covered the throne of God. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, 
that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Who's this talking about? Satan. Come on, people. We're talking about Satan here. See, you could have good wisdom and bad wisdom. The tree of good uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? All right, let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 1. And after, after we cover this, I guess I'm going to close this out, and we'll start uh, part 4 on the New Testament. Daniel, chapter 1, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. Ah, see... Israel, northern kingdom of Israel and southern kingdom of Judah, Israel was taken into captivity by the Assyrians uh, years earlier. And they also took part of Judah too. But they couldn't take Jerusalem. Well, Jerusalem got so bad that the Lord said, you know what, I, I'm, I've had it with these people. So he allowed Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians to take Jerusalem captive, and they served in uh, under the Babylonians, Babylon, for 70 years. Now, when you think about Mystery Babylon the Great in the book of Revelation, think about the religious practices that they brought up with them when they left Jerusalem. There were some godly people, and then there were some ungodly people. And if you want to know more about the mystery Babylon religion, look up the Babylonian T-A-L mud. Look that up. That's the mystery Babylon religion. So, verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. Whose hand? The king Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. With part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes." children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Well, the Bal Babylonians and Chaldeans, they were, you know, I guess kindred people. So, uh, let's see. All right, let's, let's skip to verse 17. As for these four children, you know, Daniel and the, the three, one, the three uh, men that they threw into the furnace. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm, Uh, and Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Uh, king Cyrus was the Persian king 
that conquered Babylon and allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem. And you can read about that in Ezra and Nehemiah. All right, let's go to Daniel chapter 2. Verse 1, In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep brake from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. In other words, I don't remember. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. Uh, that's a big steaming pile of, you know, never mind. See, he's going to make them. You could tell somebody a, a dream, and that they can come up with any kind of fake interpretation. But he's telling you them, you got to tell me not only the interpretation, you got to tell me the dream. This way I'm going to know that you know what you're talking about, right? But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again, again and said, Let the king tell his servants a dream and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asketh such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth. There is none other that can show it before the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. Doesn't God change the seasons? from spring to summer, from summer to fall, fall to winter, and winter to spring? Oh, yeah. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Think about that, people. God removes kings and he sets up kings. He puts kings up, he takes them down. 
He giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know understanding. You know why we got wicked rulers in America and Europe? Because it's a reflection on the spiritual, uh, it's a reflection of the spiritual state of the people. When you got uh, godly people, you'll have godly rulers. When you got wicked people, you get um, Obama and Donald and Hillary and uh, maybe Bloomberg and Biden and Bernie. Just what we need, Antichrist. Just what we need. Verse 24. He, the Lord, he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's manner. Oh, yeah. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king? But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Ah, the latter days. Are we living in the latter days? Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation of the king that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image, the great image whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. The image's head was of fine gold, the breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron, and part of clay, till, uh, I'm sorry, thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom, inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. 
For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part iron and part clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle, mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Forasmuch as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods, and a Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal the secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man, and gave him many great gifts, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Now, people, the um, the ten toes of the iron and clay, that's going to be the last kingdom uh, prior to Christ, you know, the mountain coming down, the rock coming down, Christ is the rock, coming down and destroying that kingdom and then becoming a great mountain or rulership so over the whole earth that's going to be the final kingdom maybe we should take a look at that all right let's take a look at uh, daniel's vision we're going to read daniel chapter 7 verse 7 um, we're talking about the last kingdom here after this i saw in the night visions behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns i considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom was there were were three of them of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Now, who's the Ancient of Days? I believe this is Christ, whose, um, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, and judgment was set, and the books were opened. What books? The book of life, right? I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before them. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that is uh, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. 
I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me known the interpretation of the things. These great be beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. Behold, I'm sorry, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, that's a year, and times, two years, and a dividing of time. That's uh, half, a, half a year. So we're talking three and a half years. Uh, that corresponds in the book of Revelation. I'll show you in a minute. But the judgment shall, sh shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cog cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Now, I believe what I just read ties into Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Um, I did a Bible study on this. This relates to uh, Joseph's dream. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Didn't we just read about ten horns in Daniel? Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. On these heads, um, are there seven continents? All right, and ten horns, right? Verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Angels are often talk, spoken of as stars, right? And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Isn't that what happened with Herod when he tried to kill uh, Jesus as a child in Bethlehem when he slew all the children? Verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman, the church, Israel, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's roughly three and a half years. Verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, 
called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the pre-trib rapture. Oh, I'm sorry. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Boy, you, you don't want to preach this in a, a, a Baptist church. They won't like that. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time. A time's a year, times is two years, and half a time three and a half years from the face of the serpent. Um, now, if you don't believe that, um, let's see. Look at verse 6. 1,203 score days. Okay? Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood, the flood of the dragon, people. It's happening to Europe and it's happening to America with all this third world heathen immigration. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. There's going to be an earthquake, people. It's going to help us. And the dragon was wroth, angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The devil doesn't care if you keep the commandments of God if you don't have Jesus. And if you think you have Jesus, but you don't honor the commandments, if you're not obedient, I mean, what good are you, you know? Now, if you're wondering what the water was, Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. See, Daniel ties right into Revelation. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Um, I skipped this part of Daniel where it talks about the leopard and the bear. and But you could go back and read the parts that I skipped. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there were given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's about three and a half years, people. Uh, 1,200 and whatever, uh, whatever uh, we said. I forget how many days it was, but. forty And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. A time, times, and half a time, right? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name in his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the the world. If any man hath an ear, let him hear. 
He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. In other words, people, um, if you are to go into captivity to be martyred for Christ, you're supposed to go. But if you kill him with a gun, that's how you'll be killed. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Oh yeah, he's trying to be the lamb of God. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. He's going to do miracles, people. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. See, Elijah did the same thing. People are going to think Elijah came, and this is the Christ. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Television? that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Remember, people, Adam was formed on the sixth day. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. Now, remember where the dragon's going to uh, open his mouth for a flood, and the woman, uh, the whore, sits on many waters? Well, here's the interpretation. Revelation 17, 1. And there came... One of the seven angels which had the seven vials and, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Verse 15. Here's the interpretation. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The flood of the dragon is is our people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So, all right, this is the end of this. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have another, one more study, I think. We're going to do the New Testament. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.